Anthony Albanese is the leader of the Labor Party. I don't like when they call it the opposition. It has a negative connotation. I agree. That's why when, when I became Labor leader, yeah. I actually said that. So I signed everything, you know, Labor leader. Yeah, and then is. I ran into, talk about bureaucracy. Yeah. I tried to get it changed the sign at the front of my office in Parliament House. It was like, no. Nah. What, what, so they leader of the opposition. opposition. It does, leader of the opposition. I it does was like, feel negative, though. Don't it you does. Think? Like as if you're always opposed to everything. And our job shouldn't be to oppose everything. Like, yeah. You know. But who do you guys align with? Are you in? Are you with the Greens? Do they, no. Do you, like, you don't like them. No, nah, we're on our own side. You're, yeah. You don't okay. need another party to nope. join forces. We are the only, I'm the only person running for prime minister who can form government in their own right. Right. What do you think of the? Um, who's that guy I had the big fight with? The 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 cowboy. Uh, Barnaby. 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 Oh, Barnaby. What do you think of Barnaby? Oh, Barnaby. He's a character, oh, right? Barnaby. He is a character, and he's not not a not a bad bloke. He, he did, cares I, for the country folk, though. Do you, oh, do you, or do you think he's I, misguided I, there? I just don't think he does much. He talked a whole lot about dams and building them, and they haven't built any. He, oh. uh, I think, on uh, on climate. Just to appeal to our mate out there again, Brooklyn. Uh, <laughs> Brooklyn. He's uh, he, he's just hopeless. He's been a handbrake on it all. But, but is it with the climate thing? I'm all for clean climate. Don't get yeah. me wrong. But the, all these lunatics running around wanting us to immediately stop with no, the coal. Well, can't we can't stop. It has to be a gradual. Exactly. We have to taper down and put a lot of advancement in the new tech. Correct. Right? You have to have a plan, and yeah. if you have a plan and do it right, we'll create jobs. Um, Six hundred and four thousand, to be precise, by twenty thirty. But have you got to be like a like a like a geeky nerd to get these tech jobs? Or what about if no, you dug holes all. your whole life in a mine? What do you do? Do you what? go to TAFE and get a like a certificate? No, no. There'll, there'll be jobs in new industry, including in in a, a range of renewable energy. And the good thing is that. Uh, in the regions of those jobs, five out of every six of them will be in the regions because, by oh. definition, uh, that's the place where you'll have uh, renewable energy. Do you reckon you need, we could you need make a bit of space? Do you reckon oh. we could make electric cars in Australia? Oh, we now he, here's a fact: uh -huh. we make the fastest EV electric vehicle charging stations in the world. Do we? In, in southeast Queensland, we export them to North America. A company called Tritium yeah. is established. It has created many hundreds and hundreds of jobs and a whole lot of export revenue, and we're exporting them to Europe and to uh, North America. Uh, we can do so much. We're a smart country. We keep inventing all this stuff. We've it, invented more things in Australia. I watched absolutely. a thing on ABC or Foxtel or something a few months ago, and they were listing off all the things Australians invented. We quite, we quite genius. Uh, you know types. what? There, there's not a solar panel in the world that doesn't have uh, things that were invented in Australia as part of it. That's mm. impressive. As part of it, and guess how much we create here under. 10%, like it's minimal amount, we just import them all. How about we use the resources that we've got here yeah. to make things here. So we refine things, we make Ra things, yeah, we, rather we than engineer send them overseas, things. Take batteries, for example, that will massive demand for EVs is where things the are going. The lithium-y batteries. Lithium yep. comes from here. Yeah. Copper comes from and here. And don't we have some of the best lithium in the world here in this Absolutely. country? Absolutely. And we send it. And we send it overseas, cheap. wait for someone else to value add and then buy it back. We can do. That seems dumb. We can do much better. Oh, Lithium, no. nickel, and copper are the three big things that we have an abundance of that we can really, really value add here and and grow our economy here. Let's take some calls. Uh, David wants to talk, talk to you. Anthony. Hey, David. He's in Rushcutters Bay. You're on with Anthony Albanese. Hey, David. David. Good morning. Hey guys. How you going? Hey, Albo. Hey, good to talk with you. You're one of Carl's neighbours. Mate. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, mate. He's close <laughs> to me. Hill. Um, I've got a question for you. Yep. Have you got any skeletons in the closet? Because when <laughs> ScoMo became president, uh, sorry, prime minister, we found out that he wasn't potty trained. He did a shit and rush. Um, <laughs> he didn't do anything. that well, in the end, though. Jackie asked him about did he do the feces at McDonald's. He claims no. But claims then, it was a, it was a so, myth. And and I, well, he wasn't. So, the, the, the reason why there's evidence that, that that certainly is an absolute myth is that he wasn't a Cronulla supporter at the time. Oh, wasn't he? And it was after the 1997, I think it was, the Super League. Grand final. Yeah. It Wait, so you're, you're, and you're, you're, I'm sticking up for, for Scott Morrison here. There is, there is no possibility that that story is true. The, the shitting himself or just that he went for the sharks? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
you see that that, that both because Good, both. <laughs> both. Okay, because I'm the second one is the evidence of why the first one didn't happen. Yeah, exactly. Well, that, Got what, you. A, what a okay. gentleman! What a gentleman you are! I so, am because you could have really done a low blow there. How's that for fairness? You could have said every time I walked past him, I'm like, God, it's a whiff. Of, but you're not. You're a gentleman. I like that. Let's talk to Stacey. I, I, I did a, uh, I did a. We have that. Press Gallery Ball, the charity thing, yeah. one year, and I did describe his electorate once from the, the golden sands of Cronulla to the golden arches of <laughs> Engadine. Oh, no. Well, you got her, you got her. Oh, oh. Stacey, what do you want to ask Anthony Albanese? Good morning. Good morning. I work in the homelessness industry and have done for quite a long time, and as we know, Kyle's been homeless. Yeah. Um, I want to know what your um, thoughts are on homelessness and how we're going to solve that. Well, we need to address it, and we, the the point is, we can, like we did during the Sydney Olympics. That's what I we thought. We did during the pandemic. We can. Uh, what, but what did we do? It. Sorry, how did we address it? We we reached out to people, and we we gave them short term housing, but many of them uh, went on once they had some security over their head. Uh, got on top of issues. Look at this bloke here. Yeah, you know? I've done well, but I did yeah, it all on not, my own. Not everyone Extremely does. Well. I, I've been, absolutely. It's yeah. a tough. It's a it's tough slog. But it, Elbow's right. It, you just sometimes the smallest bit of relief when you're homeless. But, but where is do all we, you need we're, to. we're only addressing this problem when we want to clean up for the Olympics and you know figure out something for the pandemic. But this is we a we should do more. This is yep. a, an ongoing a problem. Term, correct. We, yeah. we have a Housing Australia Future Fund. It was the centrepiece of my second budget reply. I did. Yeah. Uh, it will create thirty thousand additional social housing units, emergency housing. It's an affordable housing. It's it's just a start, but to create a fund that then uses the interest from that fund to assist in expanding housing opportunities. I, I know how important it is. I, growing up with just me and my mum, uh, one of the things that I had, we didn't have a lot of money, uh, so I know the value of a dollar, mm. but... What, what I did have was the security of a roof over my head. Yeah. So even yeah. when my mum was in hospital and I was living there by, m- by myself, uh, I had that How security. old were you then when your mum was in hospital and you were there? Oh, she was in hospital a fair bit. When I was younger, I got, you know, would go to relatives when I was very little because she, she was crippled up with, she was an invalid pensioner. Right, she had right. rheumatoid arthritis. So, so you were in and out, in and out of the house, but you always out, had that roof. A, as an early teenager from sort of, you know, when I was 12, 13, 14, etc., and the the neighbours would help. It yep. was a real community there in Camp. You could have so gone sideways there. Oh, been, absolutely. You mm. could have been stealing cars and breaking injuries absolutely. and all sorts. It's an easy way to get through that. Yeah, and, uh, you know, where where I grew up, a number of people did have major issues uh, with with the law. Well, that's that uh, sort of says what sort of a I person you are, it. you know. Like, if you don't get easily twisted into... A life of crime, because when people are desperate, it's easy yeah. to go down that road. But no one does it by themselves, and I had um, neighbours used to take it in turns to make sure I got a proper meal at night, for example. What so a I'd nice go into community. different neighbours' mm. houses, uh, which was a, a great thing, that sense of, of looking after each other, which is what we saw during the pandemic too. Australians helped out each other yeah, out. Yeah, we did. We did. Are you happy with that, Stacey? Uh, yes, that was fine. Okay. Thanks, Thanks for what you Thanks, do, Stacey. Stacey. It's yeah, really it important is. work. It's it's Thanks. selfless work, that homeless yeah. stuff. And a lot of homeless people, they don't actually want to Sometimes be Sometimes they don't. Mental yeah. health That's issues, yep. all sorts of crazy I do. Stuff. I do a lot of work with Bill Cruz in my mm-hmm. election. Oh, he's a great he man. He does an amazing job. The yeah. Lowe's nice. and Fishers restaurant. Yes, go yeah. out there and volunteer. And, and the, the crisis showed to me on Christmas Day this year, People started queuing up at 6 a.m. in the morning and there were a lot of... It was more difficult because of COVID, you know, they had to show their no, backs and do a rat, all of that. Um, but people just desperate for a proper meal on Christmas Day and... Mm, shocking, he, right? He gave out about 2,200. It was such a great day and he does a great job. Oh, he's, he's 24-7, that bloke. Just amazing. That's amazing. Miriam is on. She's got a question. Hi, Miriam. Good morning. Hi, Miriam. Good morning. How are you? Good. Oh, sorry. Um, I said she, but it's he. No, no, she's fine. Oh, sorry. She's good. Uh, yep. Um, Elbo, I'm a non-binary person, and so obviously I have a vested interest in trans rights, um, and there's been some reports recently that you're 
stating that men can't have babies, so that then excludes trans men um, from the issue. I'd like to know where you stand on trans rights, given the recent legislation that's been put forward and is currently still being proposed. What are the rights for trans people? Like, do you feel that you don't have rights, or I'm, I'm not across well, it? Well, there's uh, well, th- there's been two lots of legislation recently that have been knocked back that has propose that schools are allowed to expel or fire people like staff or students for being gender non-conforming, for being trans, or they don't have, uh, trans kids don't have rights to wear the uniform that aligns with their uh, correct gender, and they can't use bathrooms. um, Oh, is that still going on? I thought that shit was long gone. That's an interesting one, yeah. Yeah. Where do you stand on that? It's still there. Yeah, look, I, I think every human being should be respected for who they are. Yep. So on that legislation, for example, we support supported legislation to remove discrimination against people on the basis of their faith, but we also supported the amendments that were carried to stop discrimination against other people, including right. trans students. And, and that, that amendment got carried at about five o'clock in the morning and then uh, Scott Morrison chose to then withdraw the legislation. Uh, so we Was that a religious thing, do you think, or, or a personal a for, choice? You that's a matter for him to explain. Yeah. Uh, but, um, you know, he said that uh, he could no longer support the legislation and the amendment was carried uh, with the support of Labor, crossbenchers and some Liberal members who crossed the floor. Right. Uh, to, they went on your side to vote. To vote. Together. Yeah, yeah, and there was a majority. In, in the parliament, and and I don't he's in a tough spot though, Scomo, with the religious beliefs and then mm. and what's I, right. But you, the prime minister, you got to make these tough I, choices. I support, I support the concept of uh, well, and the reality. I think that people, you know, a woman walking down the street wearing a hijab should not be discriminated against. So oh, absolutely not. A Sikh bloke. Um, who's identifiable shouldn't be stopped from getting a job. Sure, uh, we need yeah. religious discrimination legislation. But when we're doing that, we shouldn't do it at the expense of some other group. We need do to bring believe, the country together. Do gotcha. you believe that uh, a, a boy who identifies as female at, at school, a co-ed school, should be allowed to use the female toilets? Oh, look, I think mm. that those things can be worked through at the school level. You know, like, they... I, I think that the principle of... Uh, non-discrimination is really important. And one of the things that happens in this debate sometimes is that people look for issues which aren't there. My my son went through, you know, he's now at university, but he went through school where there were, were issues. They were all dealt with uh, in a way that was non-discriminatory. That's very important, I think. Like, yeah, you want to do the right thing by everyone, but not at the expense of someone else. It, Why can't exactly. all toilets be... Um, like, you know, like the Unis- nightclub toilets. Unisex. Like unisex. No, and then, thank and you. And it would be nice to yeah. have a man in there no, and well, also some, with some little perfumes like the nightclubs people. in America. <laughs> it's very fancy. <laughs> some young people, though, they're, you know, it's, it, it is a difficult issue because uh, a lot of young people, uh, you know, going through puberty, they, they're they not comfortable with going into a, a unisex toilet. Can and, you go yeah, into the I maybe the that. wheelchair toilet? It, it, like, I'm always in there. Obviously, I'm a celebrity, so it should be <laughs> wheelchair slash... <laughs> Celebrity, celebrity toilet. Celebrity yeah. toilet. It's always embarrassing because I've sometimes waited at the front of the wheelchair toilet and there's like 12 people in a wheelchair and Jackie's just in there putting a lipstick on. Oh, that's so oh. not true. That is not true. We <laughs> had a disabled toilet at our old station. There was no one disabled working yeah. there, so I would use it every now and again. <laughs> yeah. but they, that and it had fine. the better toilet paper. That's discriminatory, <laughs> don't you feel? <laughs> well, I think you can't use your legs. You should be able to use the nice toilet paper. Uh, <laughs> Well, it's a tough to battle. We're, we're on the big issues now. Oh, all the oh, big yeah. issues. The quality of toilet paper. And also, I have noticed, and I don't want to get in, into it, I don't want to get into the deep dive discussion about um, how all the, they're, they're claiming that some of your girls that are on your team are mean girls. <sighs> and I've thought, from sitting at home watching it and having no real opinion uh, and listening and listening and listening, it feels like the media are trying to blame those three senators for the death of this other lady. And now I know that that's, that's not what happened, but it feels like they want to blame someone and these three women. Now, I'm imagining in politics, there's a lot of different opinions. Some people are loud and voiceless. Some people are meek and mild and they're slow achievers and other people are powerhouses. You just got to figure out a way to get on, but not some people are going to have tough days, especially in politics. It's a tough job. It, it is a tough job and it's a real tragedy. 
that, it is. that Kimberly Kitching lost uh, her, her life. To, I've got friends to, 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 friends to, with her. So I know very much about, you know, what sort of a nature of that woman. She was a lovely woman, and but, like, I just feel the media are trying to blame well, those three senators in the Labor Party, and I feel that that's, that's screwed up a bit. Well, it, it there there is uh, some uh, view that I've put to people saying, well, hang on a tick here, um, these three female senators themselves are now being subject to a whole lot of pressure if we talk about pressure yeah, on yeah. people wow yeah. um and and they're good people they're part of the solution not part of the problem yeah and uh, it and can be quite robust the conversation in talk, parliament right to talk, yeah absolutely if you talk about the difficulties that, that one has in in life uh you know penny wong uh has said you know you talk about discrimination uh being an an out um mm. lesbian yeah uh and a beautiful woman Asian woman, from, yeah. <laughs> from uh, who was born uh, in Malaysia. Uh, she's copped a bit of discrimination and, and things but in, in her life. But soldiers on, regardless. Soldiers on. She, she's a great human being. I'm very proud to call her my very dear friend, and she'll be a great leader in the Senate. Right. And it's good you say that, Kyle, because it seems like any woman in Parliament who is a bit tough... Oh, she's a bully. Yeah, yeah. you know no, that's yeah. ridiculous. A, women are allowed to be I, tough in there. I keep saying too, no one has ever called me a mean boy. Mm. Yeah, and yeah. Oh, look at you. Been, you've got soft skin. You're not, a, you're not a bad boy, Albo. You're a, you're a nice all man. Of, but but no you would have been tough in your time. A mean right? boy. Yeah. Whereas that's true. I think the term "mean girls" is is really yeah. demeaning. It's yeah. cheap headlines, is yeah. what it is. I it feel. Is, yeah. Well, look, you seem like I've met you before. He seems like a nice bloke. Are you convinced? Are you going to now vote for Albo, Jackie? I don't know. Oh, I've got you. I've got you off the other bike. Here. You, I've got you to. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because I like to hear you know a little bit more also about Scott, what he's planning. I haven't really asked him that. Now before. you do realize see if Albert. he comes into the studio. I'll see if he will. Look, yeah. I like you as a man. I think you're great. But I've got to be honest. If our, if if ScoMo comes in, does a shoey. And gives me a license to be able to smoke weed. Well, that's never going to happen. If he does that, you should vote for him. <laughs> yeah. okay? If he does that, you should vote for him twice. I like this. What's not to like about Albo? Because uh, hey? he knows that's never going to happen. Oh, I didn't get that. I, I thought. <laughs> no, I, I, I think it's a chance. <laughs> I think it's a Who chance knows? too. He's not. All I would have to do is to move to Canberra and I could grow 15 Christmas tree weed plants in my backyard, no problem. Oh, yeah. See how you go with that. Look, thank you so much for coming in, Anthony. We appreciate it. Oh, thanks for having me on. You're very welcome. You've been great. Thank you so much. Kyle and Jackie O. Catch up on Kyle and Jackie O. Search Kyle and Jackie O on iHeartRadio. Or wherever you get your podcasts. Kiss.